कीजिए मीटिंग मीटिंग खेलिए मीटिंग मीटिंग करते रहिए मीटिंग मीटिंग आल हुआ आप मीटिंग You know, audiences are obsessed with the show when they see an encounter in broad daylight, where it's pretty clear that the most famous character of the series is now deceased. Yet they formulate theories that he may still be alive, even alluding to the fact that he may be immortal. That was the popularity and grasp that Munna Bhaiya as a character had on the audience, becoming an active part of pop culture memes and the character one associates. With Mirzapur. Now that the bubble has burst regarding the Punar Janam or Vikasit Roop theories, many people were skeptical about where the series is headed without him. We left the mixed bag that was season two with Guddu taking claim of the throne in Mirzapur, with Golu by his side and Sharad flees with Kalin Bhaiya heavily wounded. Can Guddu handle all the pressure, especially as Madhuri as CM aims to have a crime-free UP? How will the power play work with several Bahubali's across Purvanchal? As Sharad also believes that he has staked to the throne, the subplots that tie into this core include whether the existing Vijay Verma is bade or chote, the ulterior motive of Bina Tripathi while being in the same house as Guddu and Golu, and finally the moral path Ramakant Pandit embarks upon, turning himself in. The series that is ten episodes long and each episode close to an hour. I would have assumed would lead to several character arcs and for the social and political landscape to significantly change. And what you frustratingly realize is that the series does not move anywhere from where you left off. Essentially, becoming a setup for season four that really pissed me off. Especially when I put into context the hours you invest in this series, hoping for the needle to just move an inch. I'll exactly tell you why many are frustrated with season three and why they genuinely miss the dynamism of Munna and Kalin Bhaiya. So here it is: the good and bad aspects of Mirzapur season three. The good political strategy as its core. For those really interested about power dynamics and strategy that goes into keeping a hold. of influence by convincing those around you that you're the best candidate to lead this is what essentially the series spends most of its time on there is severe boredom that does set in because truly every single character needs an excuse to hold a meeting and discuss what has transpired the reason why a sense of frustration does set in as a viewer is because this is a huge leap from what mirzapur as a series was in previous seasons a series that would have colorful and exciting characters a lot of unpredictable plot twists and especially a dark sense of humor with the dread that surrounds them the series transforms to become long hours of a political assembly where those in positions of power make decisions keep on delaying any form of bloodshed and this causes for limited face offs and mostly characters playing their cards behind the scenes while certain elements of this conspiring strategy and constantly changing who may hold power is interesting the series is inundated with such lifeless boring characters that you feel not even a morsel of the same excitement that you once felt about this series the crazy part is that the most riveting and effective sequence is actually in the series's last episode and this just doesn't in any way excuse the terrible waiting period through the 10 episode series that could have easily been cut short by two episodes some cast performances i think what's become abundantly clear is that the original writers of the show are not at the helm of affairs anymore puneet krishna vineet krishna and karan anshuman brought a certain spunk and zeal through the characters and this season is just devoid of the same energy despite the dull writing of this season i must say that some actors really gave it their all and convincingly so I think Ali Fazal really did embody a man lustful for vengeance and power. Guddu is mostly considered to be an airhead who only thinks through the means of violence and you see an evolution of a character who wants to be more than his gym equipment. On a side note, for all the influence and power that Guddu has, he really has the worst gym equipment and why the hell is it in his bedroom? I digress. Ali especially in the latter half of the season as good do loses track of his main goal and absolutely goes unhinged and it's a sight to behold 
Pankaj Tripathi is barely in the series as Kalin Bhaiya as he is mostly found to be recovering playing Tash and giving analogies about bees. What is an interesting aspect of this season what I do give it credit for is that it really showcases women being extremely influential and cunning with their ulterior motives. Rasika Duggal as Bina Tripathi only has eyes to the throne and thinks about the best interest of her son only Isha Talwar is Madhuri with a sweet dagger make sure that the crime free UP does become a reality Sharad Shukla's mother is constantly giving him advice on how to grasp and hold on to power so while the series is mostly about men their illegal businesses and their fickle egos causing them to be battling at each other it's the women who really have a stake in the matter and are causing that mayhem however this is me literally carving out something good to talk about because this is a series that simply was a struggle to binge it was so dull and exhausting from a screenplay perspective that the only highlight for me was a new character called Rahim who was introduced and absolutely slayed with his shyery imagine for a series to be in its third season with characters we all know in and out and the show stealer is a new character who barely has any stake in the matter the underwhelming aspects lack of drama and odd additions the most irritating part for me regarding the show and several of its developments was that everything was predictable you remember when mirzapur had the equivalent of the red wedding how it absolutely made our jaw drop of the sheer carnage and deaths that were happening this season is absolutely devoid of it what's also crazy is that when the series does want to show us a death especially of an important character it absolutely lacks the drama that makes you feel gutted for the loss you sit watch the show and it just coasts along and the boredom that does overpower you cannot be ignored there are some really odd additions also made in this season that just did not sit right with me i'm all for character arcs okay but shweta tripathi as golu trying to be a badass gangster is something i just found unintentionally funny her being the brains behind the empire is where she fit like a glove but to see her prance around the bad streets of purvanchal like a bahubali as she spits tambaku really seemed performative and forced rather than a natural progression for a character the character of jp yadav was the butt of all jokes and memes at one point of time right and now he transforms into this spiritual god man with a gay man friday next to him and it just seems like straight out of a sleazy b grade movie rather than a part of the mirzapur universe the series also lets go of robin's charm and cheeky humor as he is mostly taking care of guddu's family you can only sit through so much of guddu's dad speaking about his morals and why he won't budge so the wit humor and spunk just goes missing in this series making it really a lifeless nine episodes at least no inventiveness one of the underrated aspects of mirzapur was also the manner in which it staged sequences if you remember one of the building ambush scenes from season 1 it was one of the most technically proficient scenes from the series where the makers made it pretty clear that yes the series may be about the badlands of up and it will be a bloody journey but we will capture it in the most slick manner possible this season has a clear absence of anything inventive even from a technical standpoint the deaths are bloody gory and the manner in which the deaths actually happen are somewhat comical also the deaths and the gore are more for shock value and when the series had the opportunity to choreograph an action scene in the jail when guddu is ambushed they totally missed the opportunity by making it the most basic combat sequence you will ever see dim wits fighting each other i realize what was the biggest problem with mirzapur season 3 and why a sense of frustration did creep in for viewers i think it's essentially because those in conflict with each other are just dimwits who don't have any self confidence good do is dependent and easily swayed by those around him be it bina or golu he gets easily convinced about what his next move should be sharad is constantly seeking advice from his mother and kalin bhaiya on his next move vijay verma is a simple lord who is too emotionally volatile so no one is confident about their decisions in this universe this never raises the stakes of the show because you're not invested in the battle of guddu and sharad it's just not as exciting there was an excitement and unpredictability regarding munna and kalin at their prime as antagonists one would be a loose cannon and the other would be the more measured one one would be pure destruction and the other would embark upon every journey with caution but what was common about both of them was that they did not 
not depend on anyone on what should be their next move. It's frustrating to see the man-child behavior in season 3 where dim-witted fools cannot for the life of them think for themselves. And this causes for you to get terribly bored when they face off with one another, making you frustrated that they spent the entire 10 episode running time to build this rivalry only for it to go nowhere and be invested in another season where Kaleen Bhaiya apparently will be back in his prime. Char saal ka wait karwana tha, to yahi se shuru karte. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about Mirzapur season 3. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle is right in front of you. Follow me at jammypants4. Also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.